Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Sarah Barnett, and uh, I'm the president of AMC, BBC America, IFC, and Sundance TV. And I could not be happier. Thank you, guys. I truly could not be happier to welcome you to the Sundance TV HQ for a conversation that's very dear to our heart. Uh, the panel today is called Women Breaking Barriers. Where are we now? At ANC Networks, we spend a lot of time talking and thinking about this. Who gets to make the decisions? What guides the decisions that we make? Who has access? Who's telling the stories? And how are we representing everybody in our culture, women, people of color? Who's telling the stories? How do people get represented? It's, it's, a, it's a vital, messy, important, passionate conversation that's playing out uh, with such import, not just in our industry, but in the broader world. Um, so we couldn't be happier to be here today and to host this panel. Um, I am delighted to set up the panel. I'm going to introduce Sylvia Bizzio from the HFPA um, for a special chat. <laughs> Sylvia is going to have a special chat with my buddy, my colleague, a woman who inspires me, Kerry Putnam, who's the executive director of, the, of Sundance Institute. I need to steal your mic. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to? I think I need yeah. the mic. Yeah, I think we. Great. We'll take a few minutes here. This is uh, um, one of those days uh, in which uh, we, as members of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, are particularly proud and happy because when we can give programs uh, like this, which are so impactful and important, that makes a difference. So we're here to announce, actually, today, the donation again of $50,000 to the women program of the Sundance Institute as part of Amazing. Sylvia, I can't thank you enough. It, it, um, I, just, I just hope you all realize, that, you know, a, a donation like this means so much to uh, a nonprofit organization like ours to do the work that we do with artists and um, you know to provide this platform and help seed this community that we all have together here so I I just want to thank you so much on behalf of all of my colleagues um, it, it means so much and I also um, I hope you know how much the HFPA does for so many nonprofits this is um, this is a, a really beautiful thing you guys do across the field and I just want to um, say how proud we are to be a part of it so thank you It wasn't working? Okay, thank you. Uh, two important uh, organizations and non-profit in the field of entertainment and education. And Carrie, I wanted to start, we'll just talk a, a few minutes about how impactful are programs uh, like uh, the women programs at the Sundance Institute uh, on film and to advance the kind of issues that we saw Gina Davis talking about. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd be happy to talk about it. It's something, as she said, it's also very near and dear to my heart and I think to ours as an organization. I think it's really hard to say what any one effort or any one organization does to affect change in such a broad uh, systemic problem. So I don't want to, when I talk about what we're doing, I certainly want to recognize first that we're part of a, an ecosystem. We're part of a field of efforts, and our efforts, I think, are complementary. But, um, but I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about how your resources and, and what we do, I think, fits in. First, I, you know, we have a really unique um, set of programs at Sundance. A lot of you know about the festival. You're here. You're enjoying. Um, I hope. But uh, we also have the labs, the Sundance Labs, and that is a that is a place where we work at a very early stage with artists to help them define their creative visions and and find their you know find their voices, get their work up and running. And um, at our labs, we are seeing women submit at over 50 percent. So what we're seeing is there's plenty. We're, we have a window on the pipeline of talent because of all of the submissions we get. And we're seeing that women are um, as much as men wanting to tell stories and, and writing stories and ready to tell the stories. And in fact, they're participating across all of Sundance Lab programs and granting at 50% or more. So that's great. What we then see as we come to the festival 
and we look at our submissions, we look at who's coming here. The barrier to getting to Sundance Film Festival is you have to have gotten financing. You have to have made your film. By the time we get here, in the short film category, women are, support, are still submitting pretty strong, maybe 35, I, I don't remember the exact figure, but close, closer to 50% than you see in the field. By the time you get to the scripted features here at Sundance, women represent only 20% of the submissions. Now you know they're 53% of our competition this year, so maybe they're just making awesome work, is what I think. <laughs> but, um, but our program, what I, so one thing I think we can contribute, and this is, this is, you know, I've mentioned the labs, we do a lot of support for getting people's stories told, and we have a wonderful fellowship that your resources help us support. It's a year-long fellowship for women who've come out of our labs to basically get their, their career jump-started from there, whether it's getting their film made, whether it's they, we give them you know, uh, opportunities to shadow, opportunities to meet people in the industry, and it's a very intense, tailored fellowship. It's really um, hands-on, and it's really been effective. We've seen almost all of the women that have come through that go on to launch their careers, which is amazing. But I think the other thing that we can do is when we see our pipeline, like I just described, we can share that transparently with the field because I think it tells, it tells the field something about the actual pipeline of talent that's there because a lot of times you hear this myth that there just aren't women who are ready for those opportunities and we at Sundance know for sure that's not true. So that's part of what we do. Thank you. Um, last year we had this awesome panel here uh, with uh, some uh, really beautiful, also emotional moments. Uh, um, what was, what is your impression of the kind of conversation that panels like this and discussions like this can open and how do we move forward? In yeah, that? I mean, I think one of the, one of the most exciting things, as I said earlier for us about being, being part of um, a community of efforts is that this festival provides a platform for that community to come together and inspire each other and you know maybe what's on the screen brings brings more ideas the new makers coming in bring more ideas and I I believe that the the conversations that happen here um, get people inspired to go off and do more. I have one example from last year um, that it wasn't your panel that your panel was wonderful last year one other panel our conversation I was in last year was a really tough one for us, actually. It was about the lack of diversity, the lack of women in the press corps here. Um, and it's relevant, you know, Hollywood Foreign Press, it's a relevant story. You have um, a lot of women in your group, but I think what we found is that the majority of press that were being accredited here, reflecting the world, uh, you know, the real world of, of, of jobs, were white men. And what we realized is the very diverse array of artists here were finding that their work was being translated to the world by a very single lens out of Sundance. And we sat in a panel conversation in a setting and we heard the actual real world effects that that was having on our artists and on our community. And so we decided to reshape our press corps this year and um, we have a 63% now underrepresented uh, women, people of color, LGBT press. So it's been, uh, it's been directly out of a panel, so. That's amazing. Well, I'm very proud to say that we are more women than men. I in know, this you guys are great. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, so, what uh, are uh, now uh, some of the things that you're seeing this year, some of the exciting, before we close, some of the exciting moments uh, that you're seeing coming out of? Yeah. women this year? Well, there's so many. I, don't, I, I hate to single out. I love so many of the films in our program. I hate to single out any, but um, oh gosh, let me see. I, I, you know, I happen to go to two films. Uh, I've seen the films, but go to two uh, screenings last night. Uh, Alma Harrell's movie Honey Boy, uh, Honey Boy. I don't know if anyone's seen that. Um, and Nisha Ganacha's Late Night. And just back to back in the Eccles, seeing those two women come up on the stage and share their stories so different from one another. Um, what I love about women's stories is they don't have to fit into any box. They can be they can be anything. It's just about having that other perspective, and that's what I appreciate here. The documentaries here are fantastic, um, and so many wonderful women documentary. Jockey, Jackie Olive um, has a wonderful documentary called Always in Season that I love, but there's so many, so check them out. So that's uh, wonderful and something to look forward to seeing while we are here in Sundance. And uh, as we're doing this, I would like now to call, if she's down here, on our wonderful Elizabeth Sereda from the Oliver Foreign Press Thank Association. Thank you so much, and thanks for the grant, and really. Thank you, Carrie.
Thank you. here and I'd like to welcome our wonderful panelists starting with the director, actor and producer. She's currently directed and produced the indie episodic Girls Weekend here at Sundance, Kira Sedgwick. <laughs> he, yes, we have a gentleman on the panel this year and we hope we're not going to beat him up too much. He is the producer of the uh, multiple Golden Globe nominated producer of films like Mudbound. He also won the Horizon Award at Sundance and he's a key ambassador at the Women in Films Reframe Initiative. Please welcome Cassian Elvis. She is the legendary, she is the Golden Globe winning actress of the legendary TV series Dharma and Greg currently starring in Fear of the Walking Dead on AMC, Jenna Elfman. <laughs> and last but not least, coming back for the second year in a row, now Golden Globe winning producer, Octavia Spencer. <laughs> Ooh. I don't think I need this because like everybody, I got mic'd. Um, I would like to throw this to you, Octavia, because you were here last year and we had a very emotional moment yes. where you told us that for the first time in your career, you had gotten equal pay to your white co-star. Mm -hmm. A lot has happened in this last year. What are your goals as a producer now? Well, let me just first start by saying, how is this altitude treating you guys today? <laughs> Because it's a little, it's a little, so if it sounds a little Fruit Loops and, you know, <laughs> Frosted Flakes, I got to tell you that's why. Um, <laughs> well, I, I think my goal uh, is to make sure that um, all women of color uh, get equal pay um, and all women get equal pay. And the only way to do it is to, you know, have these conversations, to talk numbers uh, uh, with your co-stars. And, uh, you know, Jessica uh, and I stood together, and, and that was interesting that she uh, would take that position. Um, well, I mean, that she is Jessica Jastain. And, um, but, you know, it's, it also, we also need advocates and allies in uh, negotiating. And I have to say, you know, when I was negotiating my deal for Madam CJ, LeBron James had to intervene. So we need you, Cassian, and we need, you know, all of our male counterparts to be in the fight with us, because you know what? We're gonna be on that set the same amount of days as our male co-stars. We're gonna be on that set the same amount of days. Um, and I think equal pay is in line for all of us, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, in that vein, since we have Cassie on here, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the subtitle to this panel is Where Are We Now One Year Later? So you have the numbers in your head. Where are we now? Well, uh, <clears throat> first of all, uh, the, the, the number of films directed by uh, women at the studios actually went down this year, which is stunning. Um, and uh, yesterday, uh, from, it went down from 7% over the last uh, uh, four years, uh, to, down to 4%, uh, with 1.9% 1, 1 directed by women of color, which is just staggering. I mean, just beyond staggering. Um, and where are we now? I just think uh, men are on a steep uh, learning curve in Hollywood, you know? And uh, I was in the middle of a negotiation, actually, in the last two days, where the lawyer for the male star um, was saying, oh, he should get paid more than she should. And uh, I was like, absolutely not. Um, they're going to be most favored nations in this deal. They're going to get the same deal, basically. Um, he's like, well, he's working more days than her. I was like, OK, but she's, uh, you know, we're holding her for just as much time, too. Um, and uh, he said, well, what do you got to say for that? And I said, I'm just going to say two things, two words, man. Time's up. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yes. Wow. Wow. I love you. 
I think we all do. It's deep. Uh, <laughs> Kira and Jenna, uh, it's been said a long time ago that in order for a woman to get stuff made in this business, whatever it may be, you have to become a producer. You just became a producer. Oh. You were you were, you were very, people listen to you, Jenna. Can you talk about your experiences with all this, both of you? Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I started producing when I was 27. So, um, so, so you heard it a long recent. time ago, yeah, too. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a long time. Um, and, you know, it's funny. I. I didn't even think it was a weird thing at the time. Um, I got a script and um, I wanted to get it made, and so, you know, I I set it up somewhere, and that that to me was a producer at that time. And there were many other facets, and and I've learned, you know, subsequently that that there's many, many, many other pieces to being a producer and a creative person, producer versus an onset producer and on the ground producer. You know, I. I definitely think that the earlier you can get in the game, the better. And I do think that you get to make much, you know, you're, you have a huge amount of clout and you can make a lot of decisions and you can make a lot of, you know, you can say we need to have over 50% uh, below the line needs to be women. And you can make a lot of rules and make a lot of parity and make a lot of, you know, it's, it's, your, it's your ecosystem and you grow it. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> um, my thing has always been... You know, there's that Steve Martin quote, be so good, they can't ignore you. Mm. And so I feel like, for me, my journey has always been to just, in anything I do, I try to just become extremely competent at it. Hmm. And um, so in comedy, you know, I started out acting. I just studied acting. I wasn't, like, doing comedy. I did drama. I never even knew I could do comedy. I had no idea I had any acumen for comedy. And then I happened to, my first pilot season, I got cast in a sitcom. It was called Townies with Molly Ringwald and Lauren Graham. And, and then I was like, just doing my thing. And the people were like, oh, you're go, oh, what a comedy, yeah, you know, hey, who's that? And 20th Century Fox made me a development deal and said, here's the list of writers we have deals with. Pick whoever you want to make a show for you. I was like, I can. And so I just um, went through the list and just sort of tried to stay true to when I heard pitches or you know, one set of writers was like, oh, we can't do it this season, but we'd like to work with you next season. And I said, well, I've got momentum now, so thanks, bye. <laughs> next, you know, and, and then Chuck Lorre and Dottie Dartland pitched, we went to lunch and they pitched this show, which was a character who, she just is who she is, and you scratch the surface, you don't get another beast, you just get more her. And how would they, they liked the idea of that character, how would they get to that? And they worked backwards, well, maybe hippie parents. And, and that's how Dharma and Greg, and I said, and I just went, I saw the whole thing. I saw the success, I saw the, I saw everything in that pitch. And I didn't go and consult anybody. I said, let's do it. And we shook on it, and that was Dharma and Greg. And, um, and so then all of a sudden, it was, I was the comedy girl. And, you know, we got, awards and nice acknowledgments and, um, and that went on and I was like I became a woman I've raised children and I needed to turn I wanted to turn the ship so for me I was like I'm ready to want to do drama I want to tell humans I want to dig deeper after all my experiences as a woman I want to tell oh, I want to communicate as a woman like <laughs> and I was dying for that I was craving it but I was kind of in this still people pushing me on the comedy thing and I was like it's not what I want to do and I made a little adjustment, and then all of a sudden, Fear of the Walking Dead called and offered me this amazing role. And I'm having the time of my life. And I'm 47, and I'm having the time of my life. Yes. And, um, and I'm working on our hiatus. I did acting class, so I know I'm talking a lot. But I just wanted to get to the point of just be good at whatever it is you do. If you're a producer, learn from the best. Read everything from every producer you admire. Learn everything, you know, and just like don't ever think you know everything there is to know. Like just keep learning and getting better at whatever it is you do, and you just be so good they can't ignore you. And I think for women, having that voice, when you know you're good at something, you, you can hold your position gracefully, and you have worth and value, and you know it because you're good. And I think that that is some of the best advice I can give is just be so good at whatever it is you do. Women have been doing this for a long time, trying to be the best, and I guess, have you always felt that that was enough? This is a question for all of you. To be the best? I, oh. Your best. Oh, to be your best. Your but, best. Yeah, to you be know, your best. To be so is, good. Yeah. 
for you. But in terms of getting chances? Well, that's a whole other <laughs> story. Um, there are so few roles for women, but now women are creating their own uh, narratives, and that's what's important. Um, but, you know, I can tell you there weren't a lot of people who looked like me, you know, doing this how many, how many years ago. So, I mean, I'm here now, and, and I guess that's a testament to how things are changing and evolving, and we have to evolve with the times or we get left behind. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that's the challenge, is to continue to evolve. I mean, I think generally speaking, there are more roles for men, there are more positions for men. I mean, you know, as a producer, I can tell you when we're casting pilot, when we're trying to find directors for pilots, it's hard to get the female names on there. And you just have to keep pushing it. I also think that, but, but what I believe to be true is that, I mean, you know, present company perhaps excluded, I just think that women always have to try, work harder than men because they're in, they're in a patriarchal system. So we have to work harder. So for me, I'd rather hire someone in props who's a little green, but I know as a woman is gonna work her ass off, maybe put head of the department, head of the department as a woman or a man, but someone who's like done this job for a long time, but then you bring people up and we were constantly having like, you wanna reach down. If you're a woman, I mean, I actually heard Jane Rosenthal say this, but if you're a woman in power in Hollywood right now and you're not reaching down and pulling up another woman, you know, you're, you're fucking up, you know, you are. <laughs> We need to do that and we need to support each other and we need to know that it's like we do work harder than the men because we have to because it's still a man's world so we have to work harder. Well then here's a question for uh, Cassian that I know <laughs> we are all interested in because we all really want to know are men scared now? What happens when you're in a boardroom and you're talking amongst yourselves or you're standing at a bar and you're talking amongst yourself? What is the conversation? Well, <clears throat> that's a good question. Lakers. I, <laughs> no, I, 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 I listen. I, I, my, my experience is slightly different from, from, uh, from maybe other people that look like me. Mm. Um, I, I have uh, for five years now uh, had a program called the Horizon Award, which brings uh, young female uh, directors out of colleges across the country to Sundance for mentorships, and I do it with Christine Vachon and Lynette Howe and Sundance and Women in Film are my partners in this. So I've been leaning in now for about five years. And uh, you can tell how old I am, so that just shows you how late to the game I am, but damn it, I'm here now. <laughs> and, uh, and I feel like that not, nothing, that, 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 that we're still in the dark ages of the way that men treat women. We really are. We're just starting to come out of the kind of, the ice is just starting to melt a little bit. Not as fast as it's melting in the North Pole or whatever, but mm. we're in, we're, 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 Hollywood is just starting to get the feeling that, that, that there should be gender equality. And I really feel like that's not going to really happen until the men lean in as well as the women. Absolutely. And, uh, and that men need to be also trying to row in the same direction as women because that's where change is going to occur. And so in my conversations, they're very different from probably lots of other men's conversations because what I'm trying to do really hard, and I'm, I'm part of the Reframe program too, I'm an ambassador for Reframe, which is a, a joint uh, a initiative by um, uh, Women in Film and Sundance to create a better pipeline for female directors. So I'm sitting in lots of uh, gender equality uh, seminars, uh, uh, panels, uh, and group thinks, uh, thinking about what it is that we're gonna do to try to change the way that Hollywood thinks. And believe me, this is a, we are in the dark ages. Yeah. And I don't, you know, I, I want to say that big changes happen. I certainly feel it in the last five years um, since I started doing it, the last year, obviously, because of all the ghastly things that have happened with Me Too and Time's Up, uh, that at least now that's put the issue on the table and that, that, uh, that, that the men in the business um, are starting to see that actually, and this is where things are going to change, that it makes good business sense to hire women to actually work on their movies. And um, uh, you know, there's a re reframe stamp, which basically says that 50% of the people that were hired on this movie were women. Um, and it has other various, or 25%, it's not even like 50%, it's 25%, it's a little incremental step forward. Uh, and and I, I was very happy to see last night that Late Night uh, won this huge big bidding war here because that has the reframe stamp on it. They, they hired women to make that movie. And, um, 
It's, uh, it, you know, so things are changing. Thank and, you. And in my conversations <laughs> with, 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 with other men, I'm trying to figure out how we can hire women. And uh, I know that yesterday, uh, Paul Feig issued the 4% challenge uh, that, that, that within the next 18 months, is gonna work with a female director. I'm happy to say that I've been doing it quite a bit in the last 18 months and the 18 months before that. Um, but I'm part of that challenge too. I wanna be in it. I want my other uh, male colleagues to be in it too. Um, I want other women who have the power to be in it too. Uh, things are gonna change when people who have power actually mm -hmm. use it. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you have a, a question as well for the panel. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, I am Mike. Um, <laughs> well, actually, I was thinking as you were talking, you know, about uh, uh, where are the women directors uh, from what we see also from this documentary of Gina Davis, there are a lot. So what can practically be done from producers and studio heads uh, to pick from that famous uh, uh, pile? Because there are a lot from just graduated filmmakers, uh, uh, you know, to give them a chance? Well, it's easy. I mean, it's you, you the talent is there. Um, the representation is there. I just uh, did a show for, uh, uh, oh my God, see, I told you Fruit Loops and- <laughs> It's out. Uh, Apple. 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 <laughs> and uh, we, yeah. there were several uh, women directors and there are several uh, women executive producers, and so it's just you just do it, you know. Yeah, you, you just do it. it. <laughs> exactly. I was uh, when I when I read the script for Mudbound. Um, first of all, it made me cry while I was reading the script because I couldn't believe that people treat each other that way. Um, but because of the the program I have, and I'm proud to say that the two young winners this year of my Horizon Award are actually right yeah, over, uh, over here. Um, <laughs> oh, there they are over there. Uh, that um, that I thought. Well, I'm going to get an African American director for this movie, but because of what I'm trying to do, I'm going to get an African American woman. Because in the panels, the, the groups that I've been sitting in, and the Annenberg, um, who I give a lot of credit to because the Annenberg Institute issued the report um, five years ago, which I read and, and actually was one of the factors that changed my, my way of thinking. And it was one of the greatest horror scripts that I've ever read. And it's really about how women are treated in the business. And if you have a chance to read it, it'll make your blood curdle. Um, but, uh, but I thought, I'm gonna get a female director for this. I'm gonna get a black female director for this movie. Um, and sadly, I'm in the business, I'm making tons of movies, I could only think of four. And then I suddenly thought, what happened to, what about that movie Pariah that I saw in Sunnet six years ago? That was a work of genius. What happened to that director? And she was a classic case, Deeries, of the black female director who hadn't made a movie in six years, and that's in the Annenberg Report, that when a young white male director comes to Sundance and has a successful first movie, mm -hmm. he's making a movie yeah. within a year and a half. Mm -hmm. When a successful, when a, when a woman, forget a black woman, when a woman brings a movie to Sundance, it takes them on average six years to make the next one. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you survive in that period of time? How do you keep right. a career going? How do you live? You have to do other things. So that's why so many women fall out of this. And so, you know, part, there's so many different points of entry of responsibility. One is the agents when they go to the studios, pitch female directors. One is the mm -hmm. junior executives, pitch it to your boss. You know, senior executives, hire one. There, there's lots of different ways mm -hmm. that this can change. Mm -hmm. And it starts with one person. I really feel like, you know, for me, it was creative sponsorship to help a woman, which now I just finished my second picture with her. And she's turned out to be one of the greatest human beings I've ever worked with. Mm -hmm. And a total blessing. I'm gonna cry now. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, it's creative now partnership. And that's where things can change, is that men can try to make mm. creative partnerships with women. Yes. I love that every year our yeah. panel <laughs> has somebody who cries. <laughs> Thank you for sharing this. Um, so in terms of numbers, you said we haven't come that far in a year. But in terms of conversation, oh, do you feel so. that we have? Oh, I feel like we're having much, many, many more conversations. I feel like we're having the right kind of conversations yeah. about all of this. It's not perfect. It takes a long time to make change, as we know. I mean, a, the lo there's a lot of things that are trying to shift and change in this country. And, you know, the entertainment industry is just one one point of entry of that. And I, I definitely think that we're, we're having the right conversations. We're not doing it perfect, perfectly. Of course, it would be 
I would love it if the pendulum swung way in the wrong direction and women got offered everything and like Jill Soloway's idea of like, all men should just stop making stuff. I mean, that was kind of funny. Um, kind of so by the way, Jill said another funny thing on our panel. She said, the reason why male, young male studio executives hire young male directors is because they love young dudes getting together and doing young doodly stuff with each other. <laughs> That's a classic, young doodly. I'm, I'm not going to go that. into that and ask what that actually but is. But I do. I think we're having the right conversations. I definitely, I feel that way. I feel like it comes up in every casting session that I am a part of, in every, in every director conversation I am a part of. I definitely feel that way. I think also with the networks, like, you know, on fear, we're having women directors come in. You know, women are encouraged to come shadow the directors. They, you know, it's like, I think the networks as well. Yeah. Um, they have, they, they have need a mandate to now. They literally have that. a mandate now. They have to hire a certain amount of women, and they're, they're doing it. I'm doing yeah. a lot of episodic directing, and, you know, that, that I'm, I'm benefiting from that as well. We went around with the reframe program uh, with, all, with a groups of ambassadors to all the various different major studios to try to get them to sign up for the idea that they would actually start to create more employment for female directors. And I won't name the studios that wouldn't sign it, but they didn't want to be told what to do. They said that they're doing it anyway, which is absolute garbage. And, uh, so they would have no problem signing it. Yeah. And you know, when, when, when a studio comes along and goes, oh, let's make Wonder Woman, let's hire a woman to direct that. Well, that's an incredible thought process that you went through. <laughs> Complex thinking there. I, you know what, I, I, I'm a pragmatist, and I think that what's exciting is, uh, for me uh, right now, is I feel like there's a paradigm shift and women are leading the charge in that. And uh, we just have to continue the momentum. And we have to remember that all of us, we need to work together, men mm -hmm. and women. We need to advocate for each other. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, it's exciting. It's yeah. very exciting where we are now. Yeah. I think we've made considerable strides um, in, in the conversation. Um, are we there yet? Uh, no. <laughs> um, but are we where we were? Uh, no. And that's what's promising. And, and I, I, I like the idea of that. And I think, you know, women, we are... We're, we're very, oh, that's fun. <laughs> fruit um, loops. <laughs> fruit loops and cornflakes. Disruptive. Um, but we're, you know, we're, we have, a, I, I feel like women also need to use their beautiful, incredible abilities as women. Like, we give birth. Like, we're amazing. <laughs> we're strong, we're smart, we're compassionate, we're courageous, we're brave. All of those qualities need to be in full effect. Like our integrity as women needs to, and it helps men. We know how to make men better. To me, that's a huge offering we have. It's like my husband and I were having an argument in the kitchen the other day, and then he suddenly, we've been together 29 years, so what's the big deal? <laughs> um, and he, uh, suddenly his face just changed and he went, and then he got all choked up and he went, you're trying to make me a better man. <laughs> he goes, I just got it. <laughs> <laughs> but he got it. <laughs> but we have these superpowers as women. Hmm. And so we can't agree. You know, it's like if there's someone, this is like a horribly violent analogy, but you know, if you have someone who's like beating someone for being a certain way, and the person's like victimized and victimized, but then they try to, you know, maintain themselves and then they get hit, 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 suddenly they start being the thing that that oppressor wanted them to be. We can't be these little asking permission things. That's not who we are in our relationships in life anyway. We're bold, amazing beings. So it's like in the workplace, you know, you can be graceful and, and commanding and just help the men do the right thing, you know? And you don't have to, you know, every, I feel like every situation requires a different color of paint, you know, as with anything in life. But like I was told once, I was starring in a show, um, but I wasn't the first person brought in on the show and um, I was negotiating and I make good, I've worked my ass off to make great money when I do comedies. 
and nothing has ever been handed to me. I've had to bust my ass for every single thing I've ever done. And I was told, after having a hugely successful career, and I was being brought onto this show, and the two male leads had never done television. And I have a nice position in television. So I have experience. So they were told, oh, well, you can't make more than him. Like, I was actually told that. I said, why? Like, what? You t what? They weren't even going to give me my quote because I would be making more than him. And I said, why? I said, well, that would be uncomfortable on set. I said, for who? <laughs> I said, then cool. I go, either pay me this or, like, have fun making your show. I'm good. Like, no, thank you. And they're like, whoa, 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 hang on. I was like, oh, what? Oh, did you want me? You want me. Oh, I'm good? You want me? Well, what's it going to be? Because none of them were going to do any press for the show, and I was going to do all the press. Mm -hmm. Can I point out one of the superpowers? <laughs> and they wouldn't let me do it. I got, I got paid more. I got what I wanted. Can I pay, point out another? Um, <laughs> but you're right, by the way. I was just going to say that you were talking about female superpowers. So another superpower that women have is using money. And what I mean by that is, is that if, it's any, if, if your hassles are anything like mine, uh, the women normally make the decisions on what movies and what television to actually go to see mm -hmm. and what to watch. And so if the women here actually, and that's, by the way, it it's pans out when you look at all the numbers and the way that the, 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 the female-driven comedies do business or whatever, women are bringing the men to see uh, on, on date night. It's the women that decide who's going to see what. So a film, to me, like The Writer, is a film that should have been nominated for an Academy Award. Yeah. This director, Chloe Zhao, did an unbelievable job amongst many women who direct incredible uh, movies this year. None of them were uh, nominated oh. for Academy Awards. And, uh, and I think part of the reason for that is that mm -hmm. not enough people saw those films. So I'm just saying, women, use your superpower yeah. of controlling who <laughs> sees what in your household and take people to see films directed by women. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Let's get a little creative here. So I'm not going to say a challenge or whatever, but where do we want to be? If we could dream and build and have ideas, where do we want to be a year from now? OK, so um, I've started a production company. We've been, in, in, we've been producing for about over a year now, and every, with two women. Um, Partner sitting right there. One right there. Um, and every single thing we have on our, on our slate is women focused, woman focused, um, and diversity focused. And we want to be making all those movies and all those TV shows. We want to be making that content. And so I think you have to you know, put your creative juices where your mouth is and where your desire is. And if my desire is to see more women in the workplace and more women's stories reflected back to us so that we can go and see our stuff and know that, like, this is a woman's point of view. It's got a female gaze. It's got the writer. It's got the director. It's got the producers. Are all are women? We, you know, not, a lot of you know males there too. But you know, the focus is the female gaze, and we make that content. That's where I want to be a year from now. I've got about twelve things. Let's make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, please. I have a bigger dream than that, which is I'm not necessarily thinking about myself all the time. Although I'm sure Are you other... telling me I'm thinking about myself? No, no. <laughs> Super. Good. Good job. Thanks. I, uh, I, I, I want to I dream about a time when we don't have to have these panels yeah. anymore, where yeah. we don't have to talk about this anymore. <laughs> where, where it's just uh, business as usual is just hiring women and men uh, in an equal way. Yeah. Everyone gets a fair shot at what it is that they want to do. Yeah. And there shouldn't be any discrimination whatsoever against anybody for anything. Mm. I want to be, um, yeah. <laughs> As a performer, and also what I'd like to see, what turns me on is like full textured multi, like who we are in life. We're, we're everything, you know? Like I want to see stories of women doing what we are doing. Mm -hmm. like, we're all doing these amazing things. Like, let's have those stories and those characters and, and men. Like, like you said, I want it where it's just a nice, full, comprehensive life story of adventure of men and women and children being awesome and challenged and overcoming. Like, humans, mm -hmm. 
You know, like you said, like why, why, we're all humans. Like let's just see rich, awesome humans in action in a well-balanced environment and being made by a well-balanced, comprehensive crew of amazing human beings. Like let's, let's lean forward with humanity. You know, and I think that's what we all have in common is our humanity and our hearts and our souls. And that's what brings us all together. And that's all the stuff that makes us agree and feel and sweat and cry and make our hearts and our endocrine systems change. It's, it's our humanity. And um, I want to see that just leaned into in every regard. Well, what, what, what um, Mark Wahlberg, yes, I just dropped a name, <laughs> has uh, been teaching me in my uh, workouts is about taking action. At 2.30 at in the morning. Yeah, but what, what, I'm, what I'm learning is action, and I think we yeah. all need to take action. There are a lot of filmmakers, creatives in this room. And if you create as a producer, I will produce it. So why don't we start with tell your stories. They're varied, they're interesting, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. tell your stories. And I, I, I think that's where we have to start, like tell the stories, male or female, write it. And then uh, we have avenues like Sundance Institute. Utilize every option available to you, but don't let anyone tell you that you can't do, take action. If you wanna be a writer and you haven't written anything, you need to write. If you want yeah. to pr produce something, start small. I mean, I mean that's where I'm going, and I don't. I just I told you Fruit Loops. No, it's perfect. Started with a, a, an exercise analogy, and here we are. That's perfect. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Do we have any more questions over here? We, well, it kind of touches on uh, what all of you have said a little bit, but explore a little more the need also to look for women's story. Jenna, you were talking about that a bit because we were talking a lot about women directors and fine. Mm -hmm. But what about the stories from what we hear, we read, the, the statistics? A lot of it, it's men's stories on the screen, right? Look well, women the do women's incredible stories. things. You hear them. You, your friends, your family members, mm -hmm. everyone. Ha like, I'm, I love talking to people. I love people. Like, wherever I go, I love talking to people. I don't care if it's the janitor, the TSA clerk. I don't care. I talk to everybody. And it's amazing. And I'm truly interested. You know, I'm like standing there. We have time to kill. I'm like, so what you doing? How's your day? Oh, yeah, is your wife? And I just start asking questions. And I ask questions. And I get them talking. And in, I wanted to do like a TV show of this because it's crazy. They start talking to me. And they start opening up, opening up and they tell me. Like the Uber driver, it doesn't matter, I talk to everybody. And it's like, there's like this amazing explosion of a human story that comes out. And they're like in it with me. And then we're like, and I feel so connected to people because I just start asking them questions and they tell me. And everyone has this incredible wild story that's going on either in their life with their mother. I mean, it's incredible. And so I, I just say, look. Whether it's your sister, your mother, your grandmother, your great aunt, your mother-in-law. You know, my husband just wrote a story, a, a script that's a great series of his mother that I want to play, of how he was raised and the adventure and the boldness that she had to go through. And they're there. Yeah. It's like you don't even have to work that hard. I mean, come on. It's everywhere. If you guys were to just like, after this, just start talking and just start looking and explore the women in your family, you're going to find something incredible. And we always say life is stranger than fiction. There's rich, beautiful, amazing human stories there of loss and the, what people go through to handle the loss. And the, the new solutions, which open up new adventures. So anyway, I do. I talk. And so I have much, one sorry. more thing to add. Find your tribe. I said this last year. Find your tribe. It's not a journey, a solitary journey. And you know, you might find that the people that you hang out with every day, someone has something interesting to tell, and somebody may have a little more money than the other person, and that person will produce, and the other person will be the creative. Find your tribe and get there together. Find your tribe. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you all thank you. for participating. <laughs> Thanks also to our partners, the Sundance Institute, our gracious host, Sundance TV. 
our PR firm, Sunshine Sex, and our own HFPA team, first and foremost, Luca Celada, and my wonderful co-host, Silvia Bizio. <laughs> and, Thank you. and everyone have a helping hand to make this happen. Yes. Have a great evening. Thank you. Have a great Sundance, everybody. Yeah.